thank you, Mr. White, for critically analysing the start of the race there. Maybe we'll find Mr. White and Jesse lurking somewhere around here a bit later on in their mobile meth lab, aka a journey. Every time I pass one of those in free mode, I just shout, Yo, Mr. White, bitch! Just out of habit. Bit of a Breaking Bad fanatic, me. Anyway, people are teleporting, so you just know that this horrible chicane is going to be an absolute shambles, which is why I decided to back off and let the drivers ahead sort themselves out. But apparently, on A. Wes's screen, the guy behind me, he said I braked a lot and that he had nowhere to go and ended up being sandwiched between another driver and a prop. I mean, I couldn't have really gone any faster through there, I would have run into the back of Manny, who, as I expected, slowed down considerably due to the laggy Jodkiev in front of him. So we don't know for sure what's happened behind, but I'm going to continue to run defensive lines through these opening corners to avoid being surprised up the inside by some hasty move. The pit lane back there was literally screaming my name and believe me, I wanted to get out of this cesspool as quickly as I could, but the pit lane is closed on lap 1, so I'm going to have to wait a lap. Now if you take a look at the minimap, you'll see that first and second Dr. Peppers and the steak sauce were putting in some early work while our train of gauntlets was being conducted by Sean L driving Mike's Incredible Hulk, the green meme machine. He'd done no practice, he hadn't even bought the bloody car, and he was the sole cause for this, well, rather impressive display of clean racing. I was loving it. I love these kinds of scenarios, and it's, it's what makes me proud to be a racer, when we can pull off something like this, despite certain people teleporting or shaking about as their connection tries to stabilise, myself included. I mean, we're, we're a full lap down, and I haven't gained or lost a position yet, I know I always make this sound like the most exaggerated thing in the world, like what, you're impressed when drivers of a race can complete one lap without crashing into each other? On this game, where literally every bush is out to get you, yes, I'm very impressed by that. So, like I said, I wanted to steer well clear of the inevitability that would soon consume that pack, and I did so by pitting in on lap 2, dropping me all the way down to last place, down to 15th. Now, it's a two pit stop race, so I did have another ace up my sleeve in case anything went wrong, such as, you know, not clearing the guys ahead, and ending up being stuck behind Mike BWFC. So not exactly how I'd plan things on going, but who knows, maybe I'll be able to overtake Mike on track, or he'll push on himself and we'll both be able to start jumping people. I'll tell you what, Mike, from a purely aesthetic standpoint, I'm loving those green muscle wheels. I think I ran those on my Tom Cruise in Hot Lap. Don't know how much they like to turn in or help the suspension absorb any shock, but on a relatively flat circuit like this you shouldn't have too many problems. Approaching the pit exit again then, have we done enough to secure any further positions? Oh we have, we're up to 10th and 11th, so I'm back to my original position and I'd like to think that the people we have jumped are people who were ahead of me before. Oh Mike's gone for a spin, let's try to take advantage around the outside, no denied. Oh but he'll be flustered so let's try to line up the next couple of corners to try and get him on the long straight that goes parallel with the pit lane. It's going to be all about lining up my shifts, getting my shifts right, so I'll try to get one before rejoining the tarmac. Let's listen. Yep, good. And another one before the crossroads. There it is, and there's the extra speed. Can I do anything with this? Oh god, not if MC West comes slithering out of the pit lane and he's parked it on the apex and there's nowhere for me to go. And to think that if I'd stuck closer to Mike for his little moment earlier on, I could have been in front of him, and instead of being where I am, I'd have been driving away from the pair of these just goes to show that the smallest laps in pace can have major implications on the rest of your race. This is why I stand by Sebastian Vettel's mantra for racing, never lift he says, and I really did try to push during my outlap, and while I made no visible mistakes, my lap time just wasn't enough. MC West has had enough though, he's going in for his second pit stop already, he thinks he can do better than this, and well, that won't be too hard because as I approached the chicane on lap 7 I tried to push it too quickly, didn't turn in enough and bounced off the concrete wall, immediately Sean L took advantage of it and we've both only made one pit stop so far, so now he's got the better of me throughout that exchange. As we approach the pit exit, can you believe it, Manny's coming out. He parks it on the apex, and I find myself in the exact same situation as before. So now, the damage caused by my small mistakes is, quite frankly, irreparable. And the only out I can see from this dead end is to pit in again for the second time. There's no way I'm getting round Manny and Sean at the same time, without losing time, to guys like Mike and MC West. So as I pull up to a stop, I just hope that nobody else has done their second pit stop, but it seems that Zhodkiev has. He's already made his two stops, and he's been hot-lapping the shit out of an empty track behind all of us. 
So this is it. All pit stops made and I've got to climb my way out of the relegation zone. Now those two positions will do very nicely. Already up to 11th. Let's go chasing after Gaming Easter Egg who was driving for Jay Beast. He's lost it at the dreaded chicane and I'm closing in fast. Quite the aggressive turn in on his outside. Not really giving up a lot of room but I've somehow made it work. I know this corner is a fast one and there's plenty of runoff on the grass. So in one fell swoop I'd picked him off. We're up into safety and there are plenty more pit stoppers to come. On to lap 12. I hadn't been running great laps up to this point, so it was definitely time to turn things up a notch. Will we gain any positions on this lap coming past the pit exit? No, it seems not. People are content with staying out for now. Some drivers are even two pit stops ahead still. So it's going to be interesting to see what I can do now with an empty track in front of me. One of the fastest laps going into this race. Let's tighten these corners up. It's important to get those inside wheels on the grey. Last two corners coming up here. Sean, what are you doing? Wait, no. <gasps> Well, only one thing for it then. G Gamer, don't mind if I join you. <sighs> my personal issues aside, oh my god, nonchalant dominance can finally celebrate a victor. Two, in fact, if you include the steak sauce, who, although donning a sweat racing tag here, is also another strong Nodo affiliate. So with Sean L holding down the fort for that first lap, the work that Peppers and Steak Sauce put in early on has seriously paid off. Nobody could catch them. And judging by his lap time, Jodkiff certainly tried. I reckon I could have been up there in sixth or so, as Sean L was the third car behind me before he went full assassin at the end there. Such a shame. Second race I've disconnected from this season, and I can kiss third overall goodbye. In the parallel universe, Combo was redeeming himself for last week's race. Well, at least on the track, certainly not in the chat afterwards. Macy would have given him a run for his money, but he crashed at the horrible chicane and gave away his win. And with Jack being a reserve in fifth, Headshot will take the final promotion spot in Division 1. Explosions. Explosions. I feel like I want to start every race this way from now on. It's Division 4, which of course was completely uninterrupted by my connection, just like in Race 1, but I'm still not bitter about it. They're in Fugitives, and things got underway under the stars. The first race we've been able to have current current weather on because it was propped for night. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see that during my highlights because I disconnected again! But Drubit's done a fine job of starting us off, while Haribo and Anna Draps have had Turn 1 incidents. Moving on to the first portion of the race, Drubert is still holding down the lead, but he's being chased by Evil Tunic and Moderated Account. Moderated is reserving for Whitey White, while Haribo is making a fantastic recovery and he's being chased by Chatty. In fact, Haribo is recovering so well that when he came round the final turn on the last lap, he was in first. Haribo was your winner, closely followed by Mini Temper, well, a small gap to Mini Temper. In third we had Anna Draps, so those three made a great effort to come from the back. Drubert, who was leading for most of the race, ended up in fourth, and Pagaganois came through in fifth, overtaking Evil Tunic somewhere towards the end. Evil coming through now. After those guys, we'll look, it looks like we've got the Americans, starting with Kaisax, It's Me Chatty, Moderated Account, and somewhere not too far behind we should have Jerome. That's going to be for tenth wrapping up the final safety spot in Division 4 and that means that Reconcile in his first ever Children of the Mountain race has been eliminated right off the bat. That's saddening to see. Sorry about that Reconcile but Haribo is your winner in the bright yellow fugitive. Let's go to the results. Well, how did that happen then? How did Tunic, Drubert and Chassis all fall down? Well, Jack, Anadraps and Pagaganois all pitted relatively early, put in the fast laps at the back and ended up on top at the end of the race. Division 3, there's your results, you can browse them as you wish, I'll cover them more in the rambling recap. We even had a decent waiting list race turnout, here are the results of that, Mamash Zamora getting some redemption in there after falling victim to Uchiha's rant last week, but yeah, he's proving himself in the waiting list race with a great lap time in the faction. That's me for the highlights, see you in the rambling recap.